another installment of Melted Empire. Thanks for joining us again. Hit that subscribe button. I mean, we're asking you no money, we're asking you nothing, but just hit the subscribe button if you want. You're hitting the little bell on the side because you know it's just bear vibes. Thanks for all the new subscribers. I mean, man, share peace and love to you and prosperity and progress. Uncle Jasenem. Right? Um, today, obviously, it's Sunday. So we're going to be holding a meditation about a Christian ritual that I'm sure probably most of the family was raised in. I mean, if you're on my age group or even probably later than that, if you just were raised up within the Catholic Church, specifically speaking, you would have been introduced to that ritual. And by that ritual, I'm talking about the Eucharist or as we name the video, the body of Christ. Here in St. Lucia, we because of the french creole dialect we actually call it losty <laughs> i don't know if our predecessors if our and our direct ancestors basically saw that guys so you have to really be lost to be taking that to be consuming that but anyway we don't give it no negative vibe you know we'll let you discern that for yourself but we're going to be breaking down the origins and where this body of christ thing started now, if you have to listen to contemporary church scholars, they will say that the very first evidence they have of this Eucharist, um, which specifically again is partaking in the bread and the wine, is the Last Supper of Jesus. It was the Passover and he was having the Last Supper with his disciples and he told them, do this in remembrance of me. And it is said that he broke a bread and he passed it around and he told them, eat this bread for this is my body, you know. And then he sipped the wine and he passed the wine around and he said, drink this for this is my blood, you know. So some people see it as a level of cannibalism, you know, when you're just getting woke and you're coming on that vibe, you'll be like, that's all kind of cannibal thing that, that I'm going on there. But in reality, it also have some African symbolism in there as well. As we can see with many other things, family, the literism, you know, taking things literal have made black people stick in that enough already, you check it? And that is just a typical example of taking something literal and thinking that this one dude called Jesus was literally giving his disciples the bread and saying, eat this for this is my body and drink the wine for this is my blood. Now, folly that day, family. Folly that day. So you know already, we ran on a deeper understanding and we actually going to go to really the origins of it. This act family, or to partake in this act, basically demonstrates the Queen and the Lizard, chance that they were raising it for 96 degrees in the shade, you know, but nice breeze, man. So as I was saying family, this act would actually denote or, or display your devotion and your faith within the Christian religion. Okay? And as you said again, the literism is where they even fall short or they stick in that. So, very first incident of this, according to Christian scholars, is the Last Supper of Jesus Christ. Now all of us, I mean this is, I mean that channel not really there for but not sleeping on them. I mean, I want to help awaken the masses, but I'm sure majority of people who are listening to me within any of my reasonings have a certain level of understanding, a certain level of consciousness. So, you already, we already know that Last Supper thing didn't take place. Okay? Even the drawing of the Last Supper, we can see is all astrology and astrophysiology, astronomy, if you want to take it on the science level, you know, in their family. So, we know that bread and that wine and that body and blood thing have a different level to it okay so let's put aside the cannibalism understanding and let us take it deeper again most of the family should know that there are certain aspects of the christian religion that came from ancient egypt and in this particular example this is also the case family so i'm sure the family has come across you know the jesus character being hero to some degree, some typified, typified Christ. But also, one should remember that Heru, his father is actually Osir or Osir or Osiris. So let's call it Osiris to just finish with that. Although they say when we call it in the original tongue, you know, it does a whole more power. But it's still just an understanding and a reasoning. 
So anyway, remember the story of Osiris, what actually happened to him? Um, this is why we say it's all mythology, okay? Osir was never a real person. He's actually an agrarian deity. When I say agrarian, I mean he's a deity of vegetation, of agriculture. Because remember, Osiris, his dead body, okay, symbolized when he was resurrected, the grain, the seed and the grain should rising up out of his body family. Okay, so he is Lord of the Grain. Now, what do you do with grain? Hmm? The family should know that. Yeah, yeah. What do you do with grain, family? You actually transform grain into flour. And what do you do with flour? Not make bread? So, this bread, bread, let's say bread, bread is the staff of life, or some kind of saying back, back in the day. This bread, we can see the understanding of it was actually taken from that mythos, that African spiritual mythos of Ose, his dead body symbolizing the resurrection of the green, being an ag um, agrarian deity of vegetation, and taking the green and making bread with it, family. So that bread symbolizes the body of Ose, of Osiris. You see? I should have only seen, seen it, you know. So that is really the earliest understanding of this lusty or this body of Christ thing and where it come from. It didn't come from the Last Supper. But we know that that stuff didn't happen. It came from the kinetic understanding of the deity Colosseum. His death and resurrection being the resurrection of the green. The green turned into flour. Flour turned into bread. So the bread is the body of Osir. Which is why after the plagiarism they can see Jesus said, eat this bread, for this is my body. You see? Now, in regards to the wine, so you must be saying, okay, Simon, that actually makes sense, but what about the wine understanding? Where is that coming from? Quite simply, we can say, but, I mean, we know that Heru is also symbolized by the sun, not actually the sun, but the victorious journey of the sun. Hmm? Again, the Father and the Son is one. The Father and the Son is one. So the Son is also symbolic of Ose. The Son is needed, family, for the grape vines. For the vines, you know, for the grapes to ripen on the vines. <laughs> <Impressive trivia. laughs> for the grape to ripen on the vines. You see what I'm saying? But if that's not enough for you, because again, I don't know if we mentioned to the family in previous videos. In all our research family, all ancient deities was basically celestial. Let's just put it that way. You know what I mean? And we know that we are basically products of our, of our environment and we products of the universe. Which is why our ancestors studied nature or the nature to bring us a deep understanding of our life and our purpose and why we came. So, what I'm basically doing, I'm going to get um, an article from um, from from e scholarship, education scholarship. It's actually a PDF that will concrete or establish my point, family, in regards to Ose and his relation to the grip, to the wine. Because remember, they try and say Christ and water to wine, you know. Which I can tell you now, you will feel it some kind of magic feat demon did. You understand? But it's a deeper understanding where even the water that nourished the earth. What do you make wine with family? It's only one thing, is well, not one thing we can wine with now. But previously, don't know if the family here now that's a plane they learned in behind this. You can see it from the past. Um, before the very first thing wine was made with was with grapes. You see what I'm saying? Now, within ancient Kemetic spiritual systems, there were, I mean, okay, let's go direct. You've heard of libation, fam, okay? A West African um, um, custom, which you basically pour libation, pour water, water or alcohol out to certain deities or certain loved ones that have passed. Even veterans in the ghetto doing it now when they throw the drink down, you know, even I just do it, you know, call my brother or my sister's name like that. That libation is sort of like um, a 
ritualistic process to venerate okay those spirits family and we saw the very first example of that within the funerary texts and even the concepts of ancient Kemet where they have certain liquids that were basically involved in the ritual in these liquids we had water we had beer we had milk and we had wine okay now Ose is lord of the wine and lord of the grapevine and we're going to go and read the article you know give you a quick rundown you know encyclopedia of egyptology is scholarship.org liquids in temple ritual the ritual offerings in egyptian temples and funerary settings constitute an important part of the outward expressions of egyptian piety piety means again your devotion because remember we said earlier on in the video that to show your devotion to the christian religion and the christian faith you would partake in this eucharist you know you would stand on your line and you would wait for the priest and they would say the body of christ and you have to say amen and you open your mouth and put your tongue out and you would put the red the um, round small salty bread <laughs> on your tongue and back in them days you feeling like yeah it's christ thing boy you used to you used to worship that bread in your mouth boy some of the elders not 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 even putting that in their mouth they put it in their hand some of them even go into science with it <laughs> but anyway um we can see that that liquid concept was actually part of the expression of Egyptian piety showing that devotion from since then okay it goes on to say um, in temple rituals in particular according to the images preserved on temple walls we know that often though not always each ritual act was accompanied by a series of incantations often inscribed on the wall beside the images including the title of the ritual the ritual liturgy and the and the reply of the deity who was receiving the ritual performance or offering okay simple terms then we go to wine scroll right down there wine was often an important item in funerary and temple cults from as early as the old kingdom wine was regularly mentioned in offering lists as part of the funerary establishment okay in temple rituals wine was also wine wine was also often offered to various deities you can scroll down here um, already in the pyramid text Osiris was mentioned as the lord of the wine in the Wag festival the Wag festival was celebrated at the beginning of the inundation basically inundation of the Nile family um, on the 17th 18th or 19th of Thoth the, the month of Thoth so from that understanding you know that they understood the month of July as the month of Thoth um, the first mention of inundation right so look at it right there Osiris Lord of the wine in the Wag festival so we can see the bread and the wine goes back to ancient African spiritual systems that those not directly of us or didn't get the complete teachings took and literalized it okay and made it part of the religious system and black people go and get lost in it so that is just the reason and deeper understanding family for giving you the sources right there and the deeper understanding you know how we do at Melted Empire give thanks again all the new subscribers divine peace and love and do not forget that coconut one